Hey everyone, Ace of Clay here, and welcome to another sculpting video. If you are new to my channel, I am a self-taught sculptor. I sculpt pretty much everything from polymer clay, and in today's video, I will be recreating this guy that I made, whoa, back in like 2009 or 2010. So basically, he is a woodland wizard or warlock, protector of the forest type of deal, and I've been wanting to remake him for a while now, and I finally got the opportunity to. With all that said, I will be recreating him entirely from polymer clay and putting a nice fresh little spin on them. So that sounds like something that you'd like to watch. Then let's get started. All right, you know the drill. First step, armature. And as always, all of the materials and tools that I use in this video are listed in the description box below, along with my affiliate links if you want to purchase anything. And then if you'd like to skip armature and adding clay, just go ahead and skip to the time that's up on the screen right now. Okay, if you can't tell already, I want this guy to be really tall and lanky, so I just made out the general shape of his body with aluminum foil and I'm holding everything together with some masking tape. Once I'm satisfied with that shape, it's time to cover everything in clay, and I will be using Super Sculpey Medium Blend again for this video. And then really quick before I forget, I've been getting a lot of questions about how much clay I use for each figurine, and typically for a 9 to 10 inch figurine, which is what my sculptures usually are, I go through a pound of clay for them. So one box of Super Sculpey and I'm good to go. For smaller figurines, obviously I'll use less and for bigger ones, I will use more. But on average, I use one pound of clay per figurine. And as you saw there, I poked a hole through the shoulders with a bamboo skewer and then fed some aluminum wire through for the arms. And now it's time to create the texture on the body. I've decided that contrary to the design of the original, I want this new version to be half tree, half man. So basically, his body is going to be a tree and just his head is going to be human-like. As a huge fan of Lord of the Rings, I was heavily inspired by Ents for this guy when I decided on this design. So at this point, I'm not sure how this is going to work out, but we're just going to do it anyway and see what happens. Now we're just adding some roots to the bottom here. These are just little triangles of clay, as you can see, that I'm blending into the base. Now that all the roots are done and looking pretty good, it's time to add that tree texture to the rest of the body. And to do this, the process is the same as creating folds or wrinkles in fabric. The only difference is the placement of the snakes of clay. So as you can see, I'm just adding them to the trunk, legs, bottom base, whatever you want to call it, and blending the edges in. And I repeat this process over and over to create a very twisty, organic looking tree trunk. That's looking pretty good. Now to create a bit more visual interest, I'm just going to add a few curly cues here and there within the tree texture. And I'm liking the curly cues. All right, let's keep going. If you watch my tutorials to learn tips or even how to sculpt if you're a beginner, don't worry about using your tools exactly how I'm using mine. As you can see here and in, in all of my videos, I jump between like five different tools to do the exact same thing, like I am here with this tree bark. You just need to do what works best for you. What I use my spoon tool for, you may use your explorer tool for, or your color shapers or whatever. Find what you're comfortable with and what helps you do your best work. While you can totally follow my videos to a T and do exactly what I'm doing, that's perfectly fine, but just don't ever let that suck the fun out of it and inhibit your own creativity or your personal creative process that you may not even have discovered yet.
All right, we're almost done with the tree bark. We're getting there. All right, now to further detail the bark, I'm going to bust out my Lazy Susan, and the reason I don't use this thing more often is because I forget that I have it. When I do remember to use it, I find that it is extremely helpful because it not only elevates the sculpture a bit while I'm working, it allows me to get at it from every angle without handling it. For fine detail work, painting, or what I'm doing right now with my spoon tool, it is absolutely perfect. I will put a link to this exact model in the description box below. It's really good quality, it's heavy, and it turns very smoothly. All right, now to finalize the details on the bark, I'm going in with this dollar store brush that I bought, and I have no idea what it's supposed to be. I think it's a facial brush or something, but I'm just going over the surface and brushing with the direction of the blended snakes of clay, like so, and this creates a really nice, rough sort of wood texture, and I'm really happy with how this turns out. And then in order to not lose any of these fine little scratches that I'm putting into the sculpture, I am not going to brush this with clay softener before I bake it. I was ready for the first bake, and then before I stuck it in the oven, I did add a skewer for the neck, as you can see here. Now we're just adding that aluminum wire back, like so, and we're going to start the arms. And then because these arms are going to be sort of tree branches, I guess, I'm not worried about them looking perfect. And I'm actually going to make them look less perfect by adding this nice snake of clay and blending that in like I did with the rest of the body. This is just giving it some more detail and dimension. All right, now that the arms are at a good point, I want to create some large sheets of moss that are going to hang from his arms. So to do this, I am just sandwiching a piece of aluminum foil in between two thin pieces of clay, like so, cutting them out to be the same size, of course, and then blending the edges together, kind of like you're making a ravioli. Once that's looking good, I'm just going in with my X-Acto knife to cut some notches at the bottom there and then I'm just pinching them to a point like so. And that aluminum foil, believe it or not, is going to reinforce this even though it's not super thick, it does help. And then I just cut that in half to use one for each arm. Now to texture that, I'm just using an old damaged paintbrush like so and pressing it onto the surface followed by a toothbrush to create this nice moss texture. I think it looks great, so we're going to add it. Wow, looking pretty good. Alright, so I pictured this guy to have a ton of vines hanging all over the place on him, so we're going to try to do that right now. To create the vines, I am just rolling out snakes of clay, pressing floral wire into that snake of clay, rolling it like you just saw, and then texturing it. And then here I'm just adding another snake of clay to add some more details and then I attach it to them like so. And this actually worked out really well. I wasn't expecting it to, but it did. And then I just repeat that process over and over again until I'm satisfied.
All right, now it's time for the best part, hands, said no one ever. So yeah, I'm just basically making the armature for the first hand out of floral wire. As you can see, I'm just wrapping the wire together to create each finger. And then at the end, I join all of it together after adding the thumb. And then once this is looking good, I position the wire and then add the clay. And then if you can't tell already, I want this guy to have some pretty big hands to go with his tall, lanky stature. And then somehow after all of that, we have a hand. <laughs> Let's add the clay. And then to attach the hand, all I did was wrap that excess piece of wire around the exposed wire in the arm and then blended the clay at the base of the hand in with the rest of the arm. Now we're just adding some final details. I did the other hand off camera and he's ready for another bake. But before we bake the body, we're going to make the head so I can bake both of them together. So to make the head, we got our ball of aluminum foil that we're covering in more clay. I added a bamboo skewer to hold on to while I'm sculpting the rest of the face. Now it's time for the features. Starting with the eye sockets, using my large ball stylus, getting those to be the right size and shape. Smoothing them out a little bit. And then to create the eyes, I'm just adding this oval piece of clay to the center of the eye sockets and then using this tool right here, rocking it back and forth on that oval piece of clay to create the eyeball and eyelids simultaneously. And then once the eye is shaped out for both of them, I'm just blending the eyelids in with the rest of the face. And then once that's looking pretty good, it's time to make that exaggerated brow bone. And that is just a snake of clay like this, a nice short stubby snake of clay, and blending that in with the edges like so. And we're just repeating that process on the other side. I want this guy to sort of have like a Neanderthal kind of look. That's what I was going for at least. I think I, I kind of achieved it. Now we're just adding some bags under the eyes, like so, just a little snake of clay that tapers at each end, blending that in using my spoon tool, and then repeating the same process on the other side. After adding some final details to the eyes, I am just shaping out the mouth area using my spoon tool like so. Then we're going to create some wrinkles using my wedge color shaper. And now it's time to add the nose. I want him to have a pretty big nose just like the original. And here's some satisfying nostril action for you. Now we're just going to give this guy a pretty decent sized bottom lip, not worried about the top lip because he's going to have a mustache that covers it. Now for his ears, again like the original I want the ears to be very large and exaggerated, so that's what I'm doing. And then if you didn't know, I do have a full tutorial on how to sculpt ears, I will link that in the info card section right up there. And we have an ear and then after sculpting the other ear off camera I'm just brushing the entire surface with clay softener to remove fingerprints after baking the body in the head and after they've cooled down of course it's time to finish off the body I decided instead of fur like the original I'm going to give him a 
very big collar of moss. So to create the moss, I just added some more aluminum foil to bulk it out, but I'm actually going to use the bumpy texture to my advantage by adding a thin piece of clay over that and actually working with the texture that the foil gives me. And it actually turns out really cool. And I'm just texturing that with my old paintbrush again, like so, and then following that with a toothbrush. And this texture comes out so good. I was so happy with it. And I'll show you a close up in a second. That's what I'm talking about. It came out so good. Highly recommend. Super easy and super effective. Now, because I like that texture so much, I'm adding some more moss to different parts of his body. So we're just doing that same process, just on a smaller scale. All right, once the body is looking pretty good, it's time to make his beard. And I did bulk out the beard a little bit with some aluminum foil just because I don't want it to be super heavy. And then to reinforce the beard in the back, I'm just adding a solid piece of clay like so and then attaching my foil enhanced beard on top of that. Then once I have the shape of the beard figured out, it's time to texture it and I'm using my firm detail tool. Now it's time for the mustache. Can you guess how I made this? I'm not even gonna say it. Let there be texture. Now it's time to attach the head. I just added some bacon bond to the skewer and now I'm just brushing the beard with some clay softener to finish it off before baking it again. And then I did finish off the neck a little bit more off camera. Once he's out of the oven and completely cooled down, it's time to put the hair on his head and then get him ready for his last bake. And just like the original, I'm going to give him long straight hair in the back. Like so, and then with two pieces coming down in front of his ears. And then to create the two pieces of hair that are in front of his ears, I just reinforced this flattened piece of clay with some aluminum wire. I'm gently shaping it out in my hands, texturing it, and then attaching it like this. Now it's time to add some texture to all of his hair. Now the original has this sort of wood branch natural crown, so I really like that concept so I'm going to recreate something similar for the new version right here and this is just a, I made this just like the vines with the floral wire and the clay rolled around it and I'm just attaching some smaller branches like so around the entire thing making it look as natural as possible and I really like how this turned out. Now we're just gonna nitpick everything a little bit and get it ready for the final bake. And then as a final detail, again, just like the original, I'm going to add a little bird nest on his shoulder. Now I'm just adding a little bit of bacon bond to the areas around his crown just to secure it a little bit. Brushing that on, and he's ready for his final bake. Once he's baked and completely cooled down, I will be mixing folk art brown and folk art mauve dust together to create this nice grayish brown color. I also add a little bit of pure black. That was really fast. Okay, so once the base color is on, I'm just going in and antiquing everything with some darker brown that I tinted with a little bit more pure black. And I added some water to that and I'm just brushing off the excess with a paper towel. Now it's time to go in with some tapioca and titanium white and Hauser green medium to create a nice lighter hue to dry brush on the entire surface. Mm -hmm. 
and then I'm lightening this color a little bit with each coat just to really bring out the details in this guy. And then I go into all the nooks and crannies with some watered down dark brown again, as you can see here. And this is also called a wash. Now I'm going to go in and paint the moss using Hauser Green Medium mixed with a little bit of brown and yellow to get this nice shade right here. And we're just going over all the moss areas and then adding it to some other areas as well just to give it some more dimension. Now once his body is done, I just mixed some beige and black together to create this nice grayish tone here. I'm just going over his entire face. I think I did two coats of that. Now I'm just going in with some darker brown to bring out the details in his eyes. Kind of sink them a little lower. And then like the original, again, I'm going to paint his eyes yellow with just a little black dot in the middle. So he's only got a pupil. Very creepy looking. But he is a good guy. I forgot to mention that. He is a good guy. And I want him to have a sort of kind looking face. And I think I've achieved that. I don't know. Now we're going to go and paint his beard and his hair with some folk art tapioca. And this took, I believe, three coats to get full coverage. Now once the base color of his hair is completely dry, I'm going to go in with a light brown wash over that and then brush off the surface so that it brings out the raised areas like so. And then once this is dry, I'm going to dry brush some titanium white over everything to bring some of that brightness back. Now it's time to paint his crown. I'm doing this the same way as I painted the rest of his body, same colors and everything. After finishing the crown, it's time for the final step, which is to paint the little bird nest, like so, adding some speckles to the eggs as well. And he's done! Our woodland warlock wizard guy is complete. Let me know what you think in the comments. And then if you use any of my techniques or tips for your sculptures, share them on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter with the hashtag Ace of Clay, and I'll check them out. I also want to use this as a way to start doing shout outs in the future. And that's a wrap. I really hope you like how the Woodland Wizard Warlock turned out. I had so much fun revisiting this old project. Let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching and being here. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And then follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Ace of Clay. And I will see you in the next one.